lately we've been experiencing a fuel shortage in the country. Uh, the point is that uh, many people are tending to overfill their cars with fuel when they get an opportunity where there is a, a fuel station. And potentially, this can create uh, some problems with your car. This mainly affects uh, petrol-driven cars, and we shall look at uh, some of the dangers of uh, overfilling your car. Uh, most small cars will have uh, uh, fuel tanks with capacities up to 50 or 60 liters. Uh, Mid-range vehicles like SUVs will have uh, between 50 and 90 liters for those that have got uh, double fuel tanks because we have vehicles that have got uh, double fuel tanks. So if you know your car's fuel capacity, it can really help you uh, to avoid the problems that I'm going to highlight. Uh, shortly. What happens when you overfill your car above the standard capacity of your fuel tank? There are many things that can go wrong and one of those things is that number one, your fuel tank, if you look at your fuel tank and the construction of your fuel tank, you'll notice that it has uh, some vents that allow vapors to escape from the fuel tank into the charcoal canister, for instance. Also, the other thing is that if you look at your fuel gauge, it has a maximum level. It cannot go beyond that level, no matter how much fuel you add into your car. And that is why we have limits in fuel tanks. So what happens when you fill your, your car with fuel as demonstrated on this uh, image, up to the fuel cap point, you'll notice that the red dots now demonstrate where a fuel tank that is overfilled with petrol in your car, up to the fuel cap uh, inlet pipe, it has now blocked the circulation vents of the fuel vapors. And thereby, what this means is that the EVAP system has been compromised. It will now not operate normally. So the risk here, the biggest risk will be, there's still pressure in your fuel tank. There are still vapors that will be produced by the fuel. So what will happen, this fuel will seep out from the fuel tank because of the pressure into your charcoal canister. That is the number one biggest risk of overfilling your car. And once this fuel seeps out, even though there are valves that prevent fuel from leaking into the charcoal canisters, however, when the fuel tank is overfilled with fuel, the pressure will force fuel through those valves into the charcoal canister. Now, this is what will happen. Now, as you've heard, the charcoal canister actually has charcoal particles inside the canister. That's why it's called uh, a charcoal canister. So it has charcoal, actual charcoal within the canister. So once the fuel seeps out and goes in inside the charcoal canister, you all know the charcoal will get wet. And now the vapors will not be able to be processed efficiently by the charcoal canister. Secondly, that means now that the vapors will now start looking for other areas to escape from the fuel tank because the charcoal canister has been contaminated by fuel and it's not operating the way it should be able to operate in order to process uh, the vapors the way they are supposed to be processed. So these vapors will escape through other areas of the fuel system and that is why you will hear your car has got uh, fumes smelling inside your car as if there is a leakage of fuel in your system. But there is no leakage. But it's only that now, since the canister has been compromised, uh, these vapors are now escaping from the fuel tank uh, through uh, loose, maybe loose connections and so on. And these fumes are coming back into the cabin of the car. And thereby, you have these uh, fumes 
uh, affecting you uh, because the, their smell is not that pleasant. And also, if you inhale these vapors for some time, you will start experiencing headaches and so forth. So they'll cause discom discomfort uh, to your health system. Uh, secondly, I explained that there are some air that goes into the vapor canister from the atmosphere. Now, instead of air going inside the uh, charcoal canister, the fuel that now has gone to, to contaminate the charcoal canister will start looking for ways to escape from the charcoal canister, and this fuel will start coming out from the uh, from the atmosphere intake vent of the charcoal canister. Then you start getting that petrol smell inside your car. That is one of the risks of overfilling uh, your, your fuel tank. The other second thing, and, and, and this is very important, and this affects most modern cars, is that they have a mileage approximation uh, method based on the uh, kilometers covered and the amount of fuel consumed. Now, if you look at the fuel gauge inside the fuel tank, it has a maximum level beyond which it cannot go. However, when you overfill uh, your fuel tank or your car with excess petrol, what will happen is that your fuel gauge will not move until that excess fuel has been consumed so that to the, to the normal level of your uh, fuel tank so that now the fuel gauge can start moving down. You will notice that someone will say, oh, my car is giving me 30 kilometers uh, of, 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 of mileage per liter. When the car is overfilled, your fuel gauge is not working. So your approximation of fuel consumption in your car will obviously be wrong because of this fact. So this is very important. What you should be able to do and how can you prevent this from happening? The way the fuel tank is designed and the, and the inlet valve is that when a petrol station attendant is putting fuel into your car, the handle that is, 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 is used to put the fuel in your car has a, has a locking mechanism, an automatic locking mechanism that, uh, based on the uh, foam produced and the fumes produced when filling the car, based on the intensity of those fumes, the fuel pump will be able to determine or will be triggered to, to, to lock itself up when it senses that the fuel has reached a level in which it cannot go beyond the normal level of your car. So that is one of the things. Uh, secondly, how can you know the uh, amount of fuel you need to add uh, into your car? Of course, your car has a fuel gauge. It has the empty, uh, from the empty bar uh, to the first quarter, to half tank, to the third quarter or three quarters, then to the full tank. So when you get the capacity, the maximum capacity of your fuel tank, and you've got four quarters as per the fuel gauge, then you'll be able to determine each quarter of your fuel gauge is able to hold maybe 15 liters or 20 liters. And based on the level of your fuel gauge, you can be able to know like what amount of fuel you need to add into your car. So basically, this is the information that I wanted to bring uh, to your information uh, so that you make uh, an informed decision that when you are overfilling your car, uh, you are causing certain uh, systems to operate abnormally. How, unfortunately, when a fuel canister is uh, damaged by way of uh, fuel getting inside, the canister and uh, making the charcoal uh, become contaminated with fuel and it's no longer dry, then it becomes impossible to manage uh, uh, your, your vapor, the system will not work again properly. And this may result in probably high fuel consumption uh, from your car. It may result in hard starts in the morning when it's cold because now there's no vapor going inside the uh, combustion uh, to be able to start uh, the car. 
so you'll have some hard start in the morning you'll, you'll be able to notice that and also you'll be getting uh, fumes inside your car so when you're driving a car you will be from time to time you're experiencing uh, fuel from fumes coming into your car now uh, modern cars control or are able to know if the evap system is compromised so it can pop up a check engine light and this check engine light can only be verified or can can be uh, diagnosed using a diagnostic machine and then it will be able to uh, tell you what is the problem with your car and most likely you will find it is the uh, charcoal canister or the evap system uh, caused by overfilling your car with fuel and some of this fuel spilling over into the uh, charcoal canister what are the remedies for this number one is always making sure you never overfill your fuel tank number two if your charcoal canister is damaged you can get replacements uh, from salvage sites i believe you can also get new ones uh, kirinyaga road darisalam road uh, spare parts providers uh, ex japan uh, spare parts sellers they'll have those uh, canisters so this was just information uh, because a lot of people have been tempted to overfill their cars because of the recent fuel shortage but even beyond that there are people who have the habit of just overfilling their cars without probably having the uh, knowledge that it's actually detrimental to the systems that manage the fuel in your car so i hope that this, this the information has been helpful to you and it will make you uh, uh, understand how your car operates and that it also will uh, give you will arm you with the knowledge of how to take uh, good care of your car uh, whenever you buy another car or your car maybe is having those issues you might be able to know that this problem is caused by ABCD. The moment you have done, you have overfilled your car once, then most likely your charcoal canister is gone. So the best you can do is to have your car diagnosed, uh, check if it's compromised. Uh, uh, a couple of uh, older vehicles manage the vaporization system uh, manually. So you can only be able to know that it's compromised uh, based on the fumes that probably you might be smelling in your car and you know you don't know the reason why because when you smell fumes you'll try to look for where the leakage is and probably you'll not be able to find out when we look at motor vehicles they produce uh, several emissions some of those emissions are like uh, the exhaust system which we very well know it's controlled by the catalytic converter and the muffler uh, from the engine which passes uh, through the exhaust system and secondly we have a different type of emission and these are vapors produced by the uh, by the fuel in your car uh, we have uh, a system which is uh, evaporation emissions uh, control or evap uh, for that matter uh, which is basically meant or uh, applied to control the vaporization inside your fuel tank on the screen you can see there is uh, an image of the EVA uh, system parts. So this will, of course, include your fuel tank. Yeah. So this is your fuel tank. It will include the fuel cap. This is your fuel cap. And a very important component in this system is what is called uh, the vapor canister or the charcoal canister. So this is the main component that controls uh, the vapors that come out of the uh, fuel tank system and how the system works is that when you fuel your car and uh, based on how the petrol is produced uh, using various chemicals uh, these chemicals have got very weak uh, intermolecular uh, con connectivity or attachment and thereby because they tend the chemicals tend to uh, sort of uh, stay on their own they evaporate quickly the speed of, of evaporation is high however the vapors that are produced uh, in the fuel system are advantageous to the vehicle uh, because the, this evap system what it does is, is that it collects those vapors and some of it are actually burnt up uh, in the engine 
to create more power. Uh, the other advantage for these uh, vapors in the car is in the morning, when the engine is cold, these vapors are very crucial when you're starting up the engine. So this, the system will open up uh, for these vapors. When you crank the engine, it will start by burning the vapors, then the fuel, and your car will start very quickly. So it's a very important uh, aspect of, of your car. And what we have is the vapor canister, which is the charcoal canister. We have the fuel tank. Uh, we also have the fuel cup. And it's important to note that factory fuel cups are designed also to control how the, the vaporization circulates within the fuel system. So it's always very important to ensure that you drive your car with your fuel tank covered by the standard fuel cup it came with. Uh, it's very risky to drive your car without uh, covering the fuel uh, inlet using the standard fuel cup that came with the car. Uh, and also, uh, some people might lose the fuel cup uh, because usually they are lost in petrol stations. And you find out uh, instead of buying a, another car of similar type, they, they'll use a, a ad hoc staff uh, to, 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 to cover the fuel inlet, which will compromise the normal operation of the EVAP system. So besides the charcoal canister, uh, we can see that there is also uh, some other components like the pad valve. We also have a PCV valve. And these valves allow the canister to release these vapors into the vehicle engine based on the temperature of the car and also based on other factors that affect the combustion system within uh, a car. So now let us look at how does this operate. So on, on the second image, image number two, we can see the fuel level, which is the green line here. And we can see the vapors rising from the uh, fuel level. And they are going around the fuel tank. There's a, a vapor vent that goes back to the inlet, fuel inlet uh, pipe, and this vapor circulates within that area. Then there are some other vapors because the amount of vapor is actually a lot that escapes through the fuel tank into the charcoal canister. And what the charcoal canister does is it gets these fumes and applies them accordingly, depending on the amount of uh, the vapors that have come from the fuel tank into the canister and some of it are released to the, to, the, to the combustion system of the engine so that they are burnt up. Now, what this does and the importance of the fuel canister is to manage these vapors from entering your vehicle because otherwise these vapors will be emitted somehow and there is a risk that they may uh, infiltrate inside your car and you'll be driving, uh, smelling the fuel fumes, which are very, very uh, uncomfortable uh, smell. Also, what it does, like I've mentioned, it burns, it allows for these vapors to be burnt in the combustion system, thereby improving uh, your, your, your fuel economy. Charcoal canister is processing the vapors from the fuel system. There is some air that comes from the atmosphere and gets into the uh, charcoal canister and this is very important you'll note later when I'm when, when I'm explaining what happens when you overfill uh, your tank uh, the other important thing to note about the charcoal canister is that it also controls the pressure within the fuel tank because when the fuel is drawn uh, from the fuel tank into the engine it creates a vacuum and this vacuum can cause the fuel tank to collapse so what the fuel, the vapor canister assists with is to be able uh, to release some of the vapors back into the fuel tank so that there is a balance of pressure within the fuel tank. Thank you so much for watching and keep locked to this channel uh, for more informative videos on how to take good care of your car. Asante Nisana. Road safety is a message of love. If you drive a car that is safe, then you are safe on the road and every other uh, road user is safe. Asante Nisana.